Hello everybody, happy Valentine's Day. It's Martin Carwell here from Golf Bits Gold. I'm here with my review of the Raz Al Kamar Classic and the WM Phoenix Open. Um, and also a look at how our bets fared and where we are at the moment. Um, another week where we hit the crossbar, uh, but properly this time, the ball cro the crossbar bounced down on the line and came out again. Um, we had Patrick Cantlay as an in-play bet at two points each way at six to one. He um, did what he usually does, plays well on the front nine in the final round and got up there into a joint lead. Um, then struggled to push on a bit with some wayward shots and, and, his, and his putter, as I said last week, his putter seems to be lessening down over the last, you know, four or five holes of the final round and see this, this was my fear when i put the bet up in play um sunday morning that you know he would do this because he did it to us last week the six to one what is what drew me in because i thought sahif tagala would struggle to take it home which he okay he, he did but only one stroke and a mistake on 16 where he went in the water and i thought butts kept uh, at seven to two was an okay price but not generous bearing in mind um you know despite he was he was the defending champion which i don't like and also that he does sometimes his game is a bit off you know he, he was once him and to figala were one stroke off the um the lead but you know it was kukepta's putting what was saving him all game long but yeah i mean that's the third week running we've kind of hit the woodwork as they say um that's why the service runs though on a 100 point profit figure um annually because we have ups and downs and we know what we're doing we get up there but it goes in peaks and trough golf betting so you hit the posts you know some weeks okay maybe not three weeks running but or, or well you do really but you know you turn it around gradually things go your way putts go your way etc and you turn that you know you turn it round and you get up you build the profit up so that's why we've done it we've done it this is our four and a half four and a half year at the moment so this will be our fifth year at the end and and we've always achieved the, the profit target based upon the month you know based percentage wise based upon the average point average per year oh and i'm really confident we can do it again um but yeah, that, that went wrong. We also had part places. Um, we have Adrian Moronk. Just look at my whiteboard. Um, we had him placed at 25 to 1, two thirds of a place, because there was only seven places where we took it, not eight. But two thirds of a place there. And we also got um, half a place with Hideki Matsurama at 18 to 1. Um, the overall loss on the week was one and a quarter points. So, you know, not good, but we didn't take a beating you know we, we, we're still kicking in there and one good win turns us into a good decent profit figure um but anyway that, that that's how we did we also um the top 20 bets we're not we started this year we've not made a good start we had uh a few troubles and i'll come on to that um, and we had jordan smith in Dubai, he was tied in second and Gary Woodland after he had a great performance in first round but actually missed the cut. So I need to turn that around. As I say, 50 point target, 50 points target for the year for that. So I'm well aware that I need to turn that around, but you know, I do work on it and I do usually turn these things around. In terms of the trial selections, this is a trial that runs to April. So they're not official bets. It's up to you whether you bet them. Bet them. I know that some people did because I've heard that they told me. Um, the Corn Ferry Tour was um, in Panama, and we found the winner at thirty-three to one. Brandon Matthews took it home. He got his maiden win on the tour with an eagle on the last hole to win by one shot. So that was great. Um, our other selection, Akshay Batia, withdrew in the first round with an injury. So. Not much we can do about that. But yeah, so we're on the winning trail with those bets as well. And I say, we'll see how the trial goes to the end of April. And then we'll make a decision whether we go live 
extend the trial or we drop it. Anyway, getting on to the tournaments. Um, yeah, Raz Al Khmer Classic, second week on the course in Dubai. Uh, a very galling winner in Ryan Fox. He kind of, we had him in the top 20 last week on the same course and he missed the cut. So it tells you, I, I, know, I know I say this regularly, but it shows you how inconsistent these guys are. You know, that they can miss the cut one week and then they can come out and obliterate the course and they can win um, by five strokes. Um, but yeah, I mean, 63, 69, 65, 69, but he'd already done the hard work. He'd built up a lead. So the 69 was probably always going to bring it home. Um, yeah, I mean, Ryan Fox does flatter to deceive but I mean kind of he's won this week so I can't argue with that um, in second place was uh, a resurgent Ross Fisher now Ross Fisher was a top player about 10 8 10 years ago I, I might be out there but and he can occasionally play well but he's extremely inconsistent and you could show the say that his form is flashing the pan like but you know he does play uh, he does when his game is okay he does play well enough in the desert and on Lynx courses but yeah he had a six two sixty sixes over the weekend to get um tie uh, to get second place on his own in third place was uh, Pablo Larezabel of Spain he, he's always a solid player really uh, but he was solid uh Xander Lombard, who you is Mr. Inconsistent. Um, typical scorecard of his 72, 63, 72, 65. But that's what you get with Xander. You know, he you can only back Xander Lombard if if he's a few strokes off the lead going into the last round, or say up to five strokes off, and then he can go on one of his flits. I mean you can get a 65, but he can easily get a 77. So it's about a value gamble with him. Um, but yeah, he got tied for Hurley Long, who's a promising German player, who's again is inconsistent, who's come off the challenge tour. He finished with a 64 to get into the tie for, but he was kind of always out of it. So, you know, there was no pressure on him in the final round. So, you know, I take this one with a pinch of salt. Um, Adrian Morant was in the tie for six with Matza Karamora and Connor Syme. I mean, Moronk, Again, a bit up and down, 71, 68, 64, 70. We, he does, he's always, he's a good top 10 player, top 20 player in the world, but, you know, he needs to get that maiden win now. Um, and I think he will. And I think it can come this year on tour. But, uh, you know, again, we want a value price. We don't. I don't want to back him at less than 25 to 1, as we did this week. Um other notables, um, let's have a look. Let's have a look what we got. Um, a weekend, a weekend field, really. But um, yeah, um, Robert McIntyre, he's kind of beginning to bubble under again. Um, he was, uh, he carded 66, 70, 68, 70, so solid enough. Tied for 12th in a big tie. Um, but as I said to you last week, he's only won once on tour in the Pathos shootout in Cyprus. So, you know, he, for his talent, he should be doing better. You know, I mean, he may end up, people who reckon him top 10, top 20 at the Masters, because the court suits him and he's played there before. But again, it's all about value odds, you know, that that's fine. But uh Laurie Cantor um struggling to find his form again he got in a tie for 25th here um pretty average scorecard 69 68 70 69 he needs to push on really for his maiden to win because he's a talent but you know unless you're not winning it's kind of not not doesn't count does it um other notables uh the Hogard twins um Rasmus Rasmus did best of those, but he was only tied 30th. Um, what I said to you last week about last week's winner, Nikolai Hodgard, everyone was getting excited about him because they said, oh yeah, he won last week and he can win again. And he's odds half to, or more than half to 14 to 1. But 
as I said, he is a big, big talent, as is his brother, but they are both inconsistent, as you can expect from 20-year-olds 20, 20 anyway. And he missed the cut. So, you know, all the excitement about, you know, him being a, a big winning again, you know, winning that. Again, the same happened with Jordan Smith. We backed him. He went, he halved it. He more than halved in price to, no, he did, well, almost halved in price to 16 to 1. Because uh, he was he was runner up last week and he won on the course on the Challenge Two in 2016, but we may I made the mistake of putting him as a top 20 pick at six to four, tied 70 second. So it, it's hard for these guys to put it in two weeks running, you know. Um, three others that caught my eye who missed the cut here were John Catlin, who seemed to have lost his form. Um, perhaps he needs harder courses, but. Yeah, I mean, he needs to refine his form. Um, Kelly Samuja, who we met last week, missed the cut, and he missed the cut again, which is odd for him. I don't know what's gone wrong there, whether he's carrying an injury or, or something's up, but we need to steer well clear of him. And um, Andy Sullivan's still struggling. Um, good desert player, winner on tour before. Top golfer on his day, but he missed the cut. So again, I, I don't know what's up with him. You know, what, where is his game gone? Because this course, this course really set up for him. And there were people backing him. I saw online people backing him at 71, 66 to 1. But he's missed the cut. So, you know, these players, you have to kind of scratch them out until they show a bit of form, really. Anyway, on to the WM, formerly Waste Management, Phoenix Open. Um... Yeah, this was gutting, this was. This was gutting how we lost this. Um, not only in regulation, but we kind of... Also, I thought I had some chances in the playoff, but, I mean, Cantley's putter went... His game went a bit off, but his putter went freezing cold. In terms of... He, he kept just missing putts, you know, just missing them. And Scotty Scheffler knocked in a long one on the third extra roll. At, at was, it was midnight, exactly. So I remember looking at my phone... Because, you know, I thought it was going to go on forever because I was waiting to go to bed. But, um, yeah, had a chance to take it to another hole, miss the putt again, and, and what to do. I mean, as I said to you last week, it's, it's always difficult when you when you have a narrow loss on a Sunday night. Because, as I say, because it, particularly when it's on the West Coast, you're up late watching it. And, you know, and as I say, three weeks now we've had, you know, small, de minor defeats. And... I, I always struggle to go to sleep. I always, it's like Sunday night, early Monday morning, there's always, unless when we win, there's always my like worst night's sleep um, because, you know, I do take it really seriously. We, we do win, but I just want to carry on winning and we will carry on winning, but, you know, it does get to you when you kind of just get beat at the end and you should have won really, but... I mean, Scottie Scheffler got his maiden tour win, so I think hopefully that'll push him on, um, you know, to more glory now that he's got over that, now he's got that, um, you know, off his back. Um, I don't particularly like this tournament in terms of the crowd, really, because I, I don't like American has anyway, because they don't know any songs, you know that that they say silly things and and the throwing of beer cans on, onto a green and bottles is ridiculous. You know because you know I mean Kentley had a putt that deviated. He might not have gone in, but it deviated because there was a dent in the uh, putting surface that he didn't spot because of the beer cans. I mean there's there's it's okay having traditions, and I don't mind a bit of rowdiness and noise because I'm a football fan, and so I like rowdiness and noise. But, you know, it needs to take a certain shape. And, you know, people get very excited about this tournament. But, you know, I much prefer this week's coming up tournament at Riviera because the Genesis Invitational, because it's on an, it's a traditional old-fashioned course. Um, it's one of the founding courses of USPJ Tour. And, you know, I, I don't like the kind of, you know, the, 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 the tolerance of the drunkenness and the behaviour at this tournament because, as I say, golf is a different game from football, etc. And, 
I don't really like it, but that's just me moaning anyway. I'll get on. Um, yeah, so Scotty Kev gets his maiden win. Patrick Cantlay falls short again. One shot behind them were Alexander Shoffley. I thought he was dropping shots unnecessarily in the final round. He does worry me. I know he's the Olympic champion, and I don't, I don't really like going with him because he does. He has this habit of just, you know, doing this really when he should be winning these tournaments. Um, see if Tagala. Um, now, I mean, he looks a player. You know, young man started his professional career when he was very young. Um, Left college early to do so. Looks a big talent. He was very emotional at the end. He was crying, in fact, you know. And he got a bit hyped up on the 16th, the par 3, and smacked his ball too hard, and it went in the water, and you get a penalty shot. You end up dropping a shot, and that's the shot that makes the difference. Um, and also in that type of was Brooks Kepka. I mean... He didn't play well yesterday. His putter was saving him over and over again. His putter was really hot. Um, but, yeah, his game's still off. Um, but, you know, I, I guess we'll see him properly again at the Masters because I, you know, I don't much he'll bother in the tournaments in between apart from to play maybe one or two for a bit of practice. I don't know. Um, tied six. Billy Horshaw, an excellent week, 67-68. 67, 69, 68, 66, pardon me. Alex Noren tied six. Tried to come with a rattle at the end, but kind of lost it over the last few holes. Cut it a 68 and finished two strokes off the lead. Three strokes off the lead. Justin Thomas um, had a bad Friday in relative terms with a 70 that kind of put him out of it. Um, his pattern was okay, but... It was okay, but nothing more than that. Um, we also had a place with Hideki Matsurama. When he was solid all week, 68, 68, 66. Couldn't push on on the final day, 69. Three strokes off the lead. So if he gets a 66, he's in the playoff. I, I do like Hideki. He's playing well, and I was happy with that bet. Um, so, yeah, I mean that, that just happens that sometimes you just can't push on. Um Entire for 10th. I'm just going to pick out, not, I'm not going to go for everyone now, but pick up, um, John Rahm played okay, tied 10th, 70 on Saturday, four strokes off the playoff. Yep, he's playing okay. Not his best, but he's playing okay. Matt Fitzpatrick played well again, um, tied 10th, 70 opening round, did him in a bit, four strokes off the playoff, two weeks down. He's played well, and he's on a course next week at um, Riviera that he's played well at before. So we'll see what price he is in the betting. Um, <clears throat> you can subscribe to all the selections on at www.golfbets. Sorry, www.golfbetsgold.com. There's always an introductory offer, a ten pound introductory offer for new subscribers. So so go there after this video and. Sign up for the trial. Um, you won't be disappointed. Um, another one I was upset about in the tie for 14th was Martin Laird. I had, for the top 20 bet, I had got it down to two. Gary Woodland and Martin Laird. Because Martin Laird has played well before and likes this course. I got swayed with Woodland, but I mean that was obviously an error on my part. And I should have been Laird, who was, who was better odds than Woodland anyway, but, you know, I messed up there. You know, sometimes it's 50-50 between selections and you go the wrong way. Um, also in that tie, joint tie, lots of players, but Bubba Watson, previous winner here, usually plays well here, likes the course because of the way he fades the ball. Um, solid week, five strokes off the lead. Louis Eustason turned up to play here. Um... And he was solid on the course he likes. He was five strokes off the, the winner as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he doesn't win, Louis, but, you know, he's kind of obviously, I mean, he's a wealthy man, so he's obviously building his game now towards the Masters. And, you know, depending on what price he goes off at, he may want to watch there. Um, Max Homer was in that tie for 14th. He's the defending champion this week at Riviera. 
Um, he was going okay. His final round 71 obviously wasn't good enough. He was five strokes off the playoff. But, I mean, I, I don't know back in defending champions, but he's obviously in decent form going into a tournament he won last year. Um, who else should we look at? Um, no one really. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go through the players who missed the cut here because... Um, you know, because of inconsistencies, really. But, yeah, I mean, there was some good golf played, but as I say, it's just those final three holes where the crowd get a bit, particularly the 16th, where the crowd get a bit, uh, you know, it all gets a bit unnecessary, really. But that it is what it is. That's what the P USPJ want to churn out. Um, but, yeah, there we are. So, uh Three, three close shaves in a row, three weeks running, uh, but some return, only a small loss this week, and we go on towards turning the profit round and building towards our 100 points profit target. Um, as I say, don't forget to subscribe to www.golfbetsgold.com for the special introductory offer. If you're not already a member, um, you can get my free stuff, Martin Colwell, on Twitter at Martin Colwell one there's football betting and cricket betting and also double in the rugby from time to time um, but yeah that they're all there so as I say it's it's we move on to Riviera and hopefully we can have a winning week this week so again about until next week with the review of that tournament, goodbye.